Hello and happy Monday, everyone. I hope everyone had a great weekend. Now, today's episode is pre recorded as I am currently out of the country. I'm no longer in Helsinki, Finland. I am now in Nice, France, but I did not want to miss the opportunity to share these important cases with you. And I promise, no matter how much I fall in love with the French Riviera, I will be returning to Texas and to Double H. I am Terry True Crime, and welcome to Midday Missing, where we bring much needed attention to current missing person cases. Now, before we get ex before we get started, I'm excited to remind you that True Crime and Wine Time Productions is now officially TCWT Media. We're growing and evolving to bring you even more engaging content. But just rest assured, all of your favorite shows will continue just under our new name. At TCWT Media, we offer a wide range of shows like True Crime and Wine Time, The Hey Ho Show, The Investigation into the Disappearance of Chase Lackey, Night Court, The Transcripts, Midday Missing, and our newest series, Dearest Mother's Darkest Secrets, which is exclusively on YouTube. Now, if you sign up for our channel membership, you will get every episode of Dearest Mother's Darkest Secrets a week early. But have no fear, everything else you can still see. We go live several times a week, so you're going to want to be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay in the loop. There's so much exciting content coming up, new shows, and for our channel members, there will be exclusive content, a chance to hang out and do Q&A with me and JT, so you won't want to miss it. Now, let's get into our first case today. Keshawn Williams was born on December 9th, 2007. Guys, I have to tell y'all, my dad's birthday is also December 9th, so it kind of made me think of him when I saw that, so just wanted to share. But Kashan was last seen by his mother in Cleveland, Ohio on June 17th, 2023. Kashan was 15 at the time he disappeared. Now, his mother, Cherie Schultz Snowden, filed a missing person report the day her son went missing. But an Amber Alert was not issued for another seven days. I'm going to just say, excuse the hell out of me. But what in God's tarnation took them seven days to issue an Amber Alert? Somebody please drop it in the comments because I need to know. June 17th started out as a typical day with Kashan and his mother having breakfast together. Kashan was excited about a party that he was going to be attending that day, and his mom helped him braid his hair for the day. Guys, that just made me, I don't know, made my heart, my mama heart swell. Cherise told Marvetta Rutherford that she had no idea that would be the last morning she would spend with her only child. Kashan and his mother stayed in close contact throughout the day as she was doing what most of us moms do, and that's keeping tabs on your child, right? Shree said she kept in closer contact than usual because she wanted to know more about this party he was attending and where it would be. Later in the day, as it got close to Kashan's curfew, Sharice received a call from Kashan letting her know that he would be on his way home soon. Guys, that is the last time she spoke to her son. And unfortunately, Kashan never shared the address of the party he was attending that night. And it was later revealed that he attended a party in the Slavic village area. Now, I had never heard of the Slavic village, so I decided to do a little side research and learned that the Slavic village is on the south side of Cleveland, in Cleveland, Ohio, and is one of the oldest neighborhoods, and it has served as the home of many Czech and Polish immigrants. The Slavic village saw hard times when the housing market crashed around 2007-2008. However, since 2009, 
over $60 million has been invested to revitalize the area. Guys, that's amazing. Today, it is a very diverse, close-knit community. When Kashan missed his curfew, his mom grew very concerned. She said he was like a typical teenager, and he had missed curfew before, but had never been that late. She tried calling him, but his phone kept going straight to voicemail, which caused her concern to grow even more. She knew he was like the majority of teenagers who loved their phone and they kept it charged because you might miss a text, right? Sharice knew that this was a major red flag and she immediately went to the police to file a missing person report. Good job, mom. Good job. Now, police did finally issue an Amber Alert, as I mentioned, and it remains active today. There is a reward of $22,000, and you can remain anonymous to receive this. Sharice said that she is still actively involved in searching for her son and that she will never give up. In a press conference earlier this year, she spoke with the public about the false leads and tips that are being called in, and she urged the public to please stop all of that nonsense. Intentionally calling in false leads and narratives is a horrible thing to do to any parent, and she asked those who know where her son is to please call. Now, his mom knows that the kids who attended the party are not wanting to come forward for whatever reason, but urges them to please call and tell what they know. You can stay anonymous. Teenagers, I want to tell you, you may not want your parents to know you were at a party. You may not want to admit that there possibly was alcohol or drugs. I don't know. But a child is missing. This mother, it's her only child. Think about if you went missing. Would you want your mother to go to bed every night wondering where you are? So what? You might get grounded for a little bit. You'll at least be home. I want you to think about that. Kashan has been missing over a year and his family desperately wants him home. So I am imploring and begging you, please, if you know anything, no matter how small, please call 866-4WANTED or you can call the Cleveland Police at 216-623-5400. I also want you to share Kashan's missing poster flyer which will be on our social media page. Help his mom bring home her only child. Guys, think about it. Her only child. Okay, guys, we're going to jump into our next case. And this case has been unsolved for 40 years, leaving family and friends with more questions than answers. This is the story of Janet Landry Bryce. Imagine, guys, it's the summer of 1982 in East Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It is a warm, humid evening. Guys, if you haven't been to Louisiana, you haven't been near the bayou, it gets very humid and very sticky. It was the kind of night where people head to their local bar to unwind after a long day. Janet was a 21-year-old woman with blonde hair and striking blue eyes, and she did just that. By the end of the night, Janet would vanish, leaving behind her car, her friends, and leaving behind nothing but unanswered questions. So today, we're going to take a closer look at the details surrounding Janet's disappearance and what we know about this haunting case. But Guys, because I'm on vacation, I'm going to say, pour yourself a glass of wine. I know it's lunchtime there at home, but I give you permission because we got a lot to cover. Okay. 
Janet Landry Bryce was born on July 8th, 1961. She was five foot seven and weighed 110 pounds. She had a small frame, but people said her presence stuck with those who knew her. She was married and she was working as a barmaid. I don't know why every news article said barmaid. I'm going to just say a bartender, but and like many women her age, she was trying to navigate adulthood. But on that night in August 1982, everything would change. That night, she was at the bar. She was wearing blue jeans and a white t-shirt with black stripes and the word Alaska printed on the front. She had a distinctive tattoo of a flower on the webbing of her hand, a scar on her forehead, and another one on her knee, and bumps on both her forehead and chin. Guys, these details may seem very small, but they're important because to this day, no one has seen Janet again. Now, at the bar, Janet ran into a man she described to her friends as an old school acquaintance. He's a mystery. His name and identity remains unknown to this day. Janet, in a friendly gesture, offered the man a ride home. Okay. Along the way, she dropped off another friend, continuing with the mysterious man towards the Cedar Crest area. But that's where the trail went cold. Janet never made it back to her apartment, and she was never seen again. But a few weeks later, her card, a Ford Galaxy 500, was found abandoned near Bel Air High School in East Baton Rouge. The keys were left inside. But guys, here's the strange part. Different people in the neighborhood had it reportedly been driving it. So I want to say, if you find a car with keys in it, you don't drive it around and tell other people in the neighborhood. You call the police and report an abandoned car with keys in it. Please. Okay. Janet was nowhere to be found. And this made her disappearance even more suspicious. At the time of her disappearance, Janet's husband was working offshore with no one at home to immediately raise the alarm. Days passed before authorities began piecing together her last known movements. The man she was last seen with, he's never been identified. And to this day, no one knows who he was, or where he went, which makes me question if she was driving him home and another friend, did that friend not ask his name? I'm just asking questions, but let's take a step back for a moment. We've got a woman who was last seen with an unidentified man, a car found abandoned in a neighborhood where strangers had been driving it and no signs of Janet anywhere. It's a case that raises so many questions like, who is this man? What happened after Janet dropped off her friend? And why was her car left in such a suspicious manner? Why were random people driving it? Okay. If you're familiar with cases like this, you'll know that sometimes even the smallest detail can make all of the difference in uncovering the truth. Janet had very distinguishing features, that tattoo, the scars. Okay, yet despite these identifiable marks, there has been no trace of her for over four decades. Now, people have said, could her husband's absence have contributed to the delayed investigation? Maybe. He worked offshore. They do not always get to call home every day. And also, what about the community around Bel Air High School? Did anyone see when she or her car showed up? And I really want to know, why did people start driving the car without alerting authorities? Who the hell thought that was okay? I, I truly have thought about that. Who thinks it's okay to find a car with keys in it and just go take it for a spin? I don't know anyone who would think that was okay. Now, 
we do not have the answers to these questions yet, but we do know is that Janice's case deserves attention. The disappearance of a young woman under any circumstances should not be forgotten. And guys, we've seen that there are so many cold cases, okay? It just takes one person to come forward with a tip. One person, okay? So I want you to think about that because her disappearance remains unsolved and she is considered missing under suspicious circumstances. And over the years, her case has grown colder. But we can bring attention and awareness. Her family is still holding out hope that someone has the information needed to solve it. Guys, after 40 years, people start passing away. And if they die, they take those secrets with them. So please, if you or anyone you know has information on the disappearance of Janet Landry Bryce, please contact the Sheriff's Office at 225-389-5073. Remember, any tip, no matter how small, could make the difference. And let's do our part. Let's be sure to share the missing person flyers. So since I'm out of the country still, I thought I would share some safety tips for traveling overseas. And guys, I'm glad I'm covering this and pre-recording it for you because I learned some things that I will be practicing before I catch my flight next week. Number one, research your destination, okay? Understand the local laws, customs, and cultures. Check for travel advisories and updates from our government. There are times that the U.S. government says, do not go to Cancun, so you want to check that. Number two, keep copies of important documents. Make copies of your passport, visas, and travel insurance. And you want to store digital copy, copies in a secure cloud-based service, not just on your phone. Three, register with your embassy. Okay. You can sign up for the smart traveler enrollment program or whatever your country's equivalent is. And you can provide your contact details and your travel itinerary. Now, this is a big one. Get travel insurance. We all think travel insurance is just to cover if your flight gets canceled. No, you want to choose a comprehensive policy that covers health, theft, and cancellations. You also want to make sure it includes emergency evacuation coverage. Guys, the first time I flew to the Philippines alone, I didn't do that. And luckily, a coworker said, you need to get that emergency evacuation coverage. They have typhoons. You might need to be flighted out of there. It didn't happen but I had never thought of that before. So number five, stay connected, okay? You want to purchase a local SIM card if you need to. Most phone plans now have international phone plans. Please share your itinerary with family or friends and try to stay in touch regularly. I have heard people say, oh, well, I will just keep a look on their Facebook or their Instagram. They'll be posting pictures. And then when they go missing, they're like, oh, well, they haven't posted, but I don't know where they are. Please share your itinerary. Number six, keep valuables secure. Okay. Use a money belt or a hidden pouch for cash cards and your passport. Guys, people will know you're a tourist and some countries they will target you. Also, keep your bag zipped, carry it close to your body in crowded areas. I'm bad about that. Number seven, use trusted transportation, okay? Use official taxis or rideshare services like Uber or Lyft. 
do not. I can tell you when Double H and I went to Jamaica to get married, we had a guy pull up to us and say, hey, do you need a taxi? It was just a random white car. We almost got in it. Thank God we didn't because our car that we had ordered was late. Luckily, it showed up. Once again, number eight, be aware of your surroundings, okay? Avoid walking alone at night and in unfamiliar areas, okay? Keep an eye on your belongings and be cautious of pickpockets. Number nine, avoid public Wi-Fi for sensitive transactions. Guys, do not log into the country's Wi-Fi and then go to your bank account and transfer money or log into an account like that. Do not do that. You're going to want to use a VPN when accessing personal information or financial accounts. You can get portable Wi-Fi devices, which are more secure. Okay. Number 10, learn basic local phrases. Guys, that does not mean cerveza en baños. Those are the two Spanish words that I know. Bathroom and beer. You need to wor- know a few local phrases. I know in Finland, quitos means thank you. But I am going to practice a few more. Because knowing a few words in the local language can help an emergency. Download a translation app for quick assistance. Google Translate works wonderful. Okay, number 11, respect local laws and customs. Guys, the first thing I thought of when I saw this was the Sex in the City movie where the girls went to Dubai and Samantha did what Samantha does and on the beach was um, doing naughty things, which is against the law there. So you need to know what the local laws and customs are. You need to be mindful of dress codes, gestures, and social norms. For example, my finger is broken. I need to be careful of doing that while I'm traveling because they may think I'm just being naughty, and I'm not, okay? Also, avoid political discussions or taking photos of government buildings. You don't want them to think you're spying or anything like that. Number 12, stay healthy. Make sure you carry any necessary medication and a basic first aid kit. I'm going to tell you on that. I carry my medication because I have some that are very critical to me staying alive. I carry them in my carry-on. I do not check them in my bag because I one time was going to Costa Rica. My suitcase went to Cuba. And I didn't get it back while I was on my trips. Also, drink bottled water if the tap water is not safe and be cautious with street vendors. Okay, thankfully, Finland, excellent water, excellent food, same thing in France. Number 13, no emergency numbers. Guys, I learned the last time I was in Finland, they don't use 911. That is not their emergency number. I want to say it's 222. I'm going to look that up before I go, and I'm going to learn what it is in France. So you want to research that, and you want to save that to your phone. You also, if you have a contact in that country, you want to save them to your phone, okay? You also want to identify the nearest embassy or consulate. Number 14. Please be careful with alcohol. Yes, I'm telling that to myself. Terry, please do not drink all the wine in Nice, France, or in Monaco while you're there, okay? Avoid excessive drinking, especially in unfamiliar environments. And please never leave your drink unattended. Guys, I don't care where you are. You don't do that even back home. Number 15, like I said last week, trust your instincts. If a situation feels unsafe or uncomfortable, leave immediately. Listen to your intuition and prioritize your safety above all. 
Now, these tips should help ensure a safer and more enjoyable overseas experience. Like I said, I learned a few things that I need to do in preparation for my trip. Even though I feel very comfortable in Finland now, I even know my way around the city center. I'm still going to program in their emergency number and make sure I share my travel plans. So I want to thank you all for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday when I am back home in Texas for our next episode of Midday Missing. In the meantime, be sure to join our Facebook group. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay connected. I will be posting some pictures from my trip on my Terry True Crime Facebook page and my Terry True Crime Insta page. And remember, you can catch all of our productions right here on our YouTube channel. And don't forget, you can listen to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And guys, until next time, stay safe, watch out for crime, and join me in enjoying my wine time. Bye, guys.